sorry, it, it's my monkey's first opera. <laughs> Dance with me, both my hands I offer thee. Right foot first, left foot third, round about and back again. George thought the boy and girl must be Hansel and Gretel. I would dance but don't know how, when to jump or when to bow. Show me what I ought to do, so that I may dance like you. With your foot you tap, tap, tap. With your hands you clap, clap, clap. Right foot first, left foot third, round about and back again. The opera was everything Betsy had said it would be. Hansel and Gretel danced and played in a magical forest. There was a sandman who lived in a tree. Who made them fall asleep. and a dew fairy who woke them up. Then they found a house you could eat, but the house belonged to a scary witch who wanted to eat them. Hocus pocus, now comes Yocus. Children, watch the magic head. Eyes are staring dull as lead. But Hansel and Gretel outsmarted the witch. Bell was broken, and all the gingerbread men turned back into kids. Good job! Wow. Oh, it was incredible! <laughs> George liked it so much, he got the music. Wow. I just wish I could have gone with you. Crummy chicken pox. This'll keep your head dry. <laughs> hey, George, you look like you could be in Betsy's opera. Did he? Huh? <gasps> oh. <laughs> he sure did. In fact, he could be all the people in Betsy's opera. He could do the opera for Betsy all by himself. <laughs> His sets had to be easy to move. George taped the pictures he had drawn onto the paper roll. George's opera was ready to roll. George wants to know if we can come over. He has a surprise for Betsy. The show's about to start. Show? Brother, come and dance with me. Both Is that Hansel and Gretel? Right foot first, How left cute. foot third, round the mountain back again. And <laughs> there's the Sandman. And there they go, off to sleep. Here comes my favorite part. The Dew Fairy. It's me! I'm the Dew Fairy! <gasps> wow! Ooh, the scary witch! Oh, be careful! Sorry you missed the opera? No, I'm sure George's was much better. It does make me wonder, though. Oh? How do you feel about ballet? Huh. Ah! <laughs> Summer afternoon. The perfect time for a game of Find the Pigeon. <laughs> Okay, 
George, playtime's over. Time to clean your room. <laughs> you can play with Compass after you clean your room. <laughs> Time, George. <laughs> I don't think you'll fit in the bird bath, George. You're definitely a tub monkey. <laughs> okay, time to brush your teeth and hit the sack, George. Even though being a monkey was the greatest thing ever, pigeons didn't have to do what anybody told them. George, time to clean your room, take a bath, wash your ears, brush your teeth, go to bed, wake up, make yourself breakfast. So the next morning, George made up his mind to live like a pigeon. <laughs> Keeping up with pigeons was hard work if he didn't come with wings. Plus, pigeons didn't have to wait for the don't walk light. <laughs> George had lost his flock. To be a pigeon, you had to fly. Here were lots of animals who didn't have to clean their rooms or brush their teeth. Surely George could find one he could be, like a chameleon. They could change color effortlessly. Monkeys couldn't. <laughs> hey, George. Ah. If only there was one animal that didn't act so much, well, like an animal. Hmm. Uh oh. Hey, looks like we're stuck. Oh. It's okay, Hundley. We can handle this. I'll sound the alarm. Uh-oh. Oh. There's only one way out. But we need somebody who can monkey up. Say. Huh? <laughs> You've been such a good dog, George. I almost forgot you were a monkey. <laughs> George had almost forgotten he was a monkey, too. <laughs> you did it! Thanks, George! Even Hunley thought George was pretty amazing. He might even make a good dog someday. But George didn't want to be a dog anymore. All he wanted was to take a bath, brush his teeth, and go to bed in his nice, clean room. A sunny day in a garden project meant one thing to Curious George. <laughs> that ought to soften it up a bit. Have at it, George.
Make the hole good and deep, George. We don't want the roots to dry up. <laughs> George was an old dirt digging pro. But this time, he saw something he'd never noticed before. <laughs> there were things living in this dirt. Uh, whoa, whoa, uh, where are you going with those worms? <laughs> George, we've been through this before, remember? The turtle? George remembered the turtle all right. It happened the first time he went swimming in Lake Wanasink Lake with Bill. Here you go, George! Ah! Right. There were so many different living things, it was like a zoo. Except wet. <laughs> what I tell you? Great, huh? <laughs> they live down there just like we live up here. Some animals breathe in water like we breathe on land. Oh, I gotta do my paper out. Keep looking, George. If you need anything, ask Mr. Quint. <laughs> huh? Turtles lived on land, just like people and monkeys. But did they know to hold their breath? Mm. <laughs> Suddenly, it was clear. That turtle needed a bath. <laughs> he imagined having a turtle for a brother. George told his plan to the turtle. But the turtle didn't seem happy. Maybe he was homesick. Aha! George brought back all the green lake stuff he could find, even the slimy things. <gasps> He'd accidentally caught a fish. The turtle had to like that. Could sand and snails and frogs and lily pads and slimy things, plus a fish, not be enough? The only thing the lake had that this tub didn't was Mr. Quint. Maybe a monkey could never make a turtle happy. Except by leaving it alone. Ah, oh, what a day. I can't wait for a nice, long soak in the tub. Whoa! Who are you? <laughs> I hope you've learned there's more to a happy home than just a dirty bathtub. Thinking back, George realized even though it would be fun to have worms living under his bed, they'd be happier in their own home, dirt. Still, it was exciting to think new friends might turn up right in your own backyard, or even under it. When winter began, everything outdoors looked different. The days were short, the grass was brown, and the trees were bare. George, don't forget your coat. It may be sunny, but it's turning really cold out there. <laughs> George
George had toys for summer and toys for snow, but there were no toys for just plain cold. There weren't even birds to watch. George had won. He was having fun like winter had never come. <laughs> the bubble froze. That was pretty interesting. But it wasn't what George wanted it to do. He knew his dolphin couldn't freeze. He could play with that any way he wanted. <laughs> there, that'll warm you up. George was thinking two things. Hello? Boy, was this Coco good. And that he was giving up. How can a monkey have any fun when his stuff all freezes up? Then he knew exactly how. George's plan was working. <laughs> George had made an ice bowling set. Finally having fun. <laughs> then Jumpy did something unexpected. <laughs> At first, George thought squirrels must really hate bowling. But Jumpy only wanted to get the frozen nuts. <laughs> George and Jumpy played nut hockey till the sun went down. Then he set up for the next day. All that work inventing fun stuff, and it was all for nothing. Winter. It was like a roller coaster of blah. Started already? We're supposed to get a ton of snow tonight. Well, good thing I bought a new shovel. Maybe inventing stuff wasn't all for nothing. It helped him survive the dull of winter till the first snow. George, it's snowing in the house. <laughs> yeah, winter is a roller coaster. And monkeys love roller coasters. George mal devia esperar. Who can wait a whole day to get um bunny? Inteiro para fazer festinhas a coelhos. Going out. Vai sair? <laughs> Be a good Seu little monkey. Seu mama <laughs> George thought George he could keep the bunnies company while Bill was away. While Bill was away.
They were so tão still, quietinho, so quiet, tão so fuzzy. Tão pudinhos, bunnies, coelhinhos, bunnies. Coelhinhos. Bill wouldn't Bill mind if he petted one bunny, just once. If he was very, very careful. Muito, muito Bunnies were a very different animal from the bunnies. The bunnies were so still quiet and quiet. Fast and fast. They were almost too fast to see. At least they couldn't get out of the yard. Bill was not going to be happy about this. Para os coelhinhos, aquilo era um grande jogo de escondidas, o que não era nada bom para o George. Os coelhos eram demasiado rápidos. O George tinha de ser mais esperto que eles. Ele contou as tigelas, a panhara, a branquinha, o mancha, o orelhas pretas, o caldo da fofa, o chocolate e... A jumpy squirrel. Oh, jumpy. Ooh. Um, Jun tem de ser agarrado por um macaco à lista de coisas que os esquilos não gostam nada. Nem todas as pegadas levam a coelhinhos fofinhos. George tinha apanhado todos os coelhos, exceto o Herbert de Nascimento, e o Bill estava quase a chegar a casa. George tinha procurado por todo lado. O que ele precisava era de um especialista em coelhos, mas quem é que sabia muito sobre coelhos? Não ia resultar. George tentou explicar que aquilo não, que não era o momento para se brincar com uma bola de fogo. Ela tinha de encontrar o Herberto Nascimento. Mas aquilo não era uma bola normal. normal. Aquilo era a cauda do Herberto Nascimento. Olá, George! A fazer companhia aos coelhos? Obrigado. Como recompensa por isso e por ser tão paciente, vou deixar que faça as festas a um deles. Fazer festas a um coelho não é fácil. Temos de manter sempre o controle. Passo 1. Um, abrir a casota. Mas queres fazer festas a um coelho, não queres? Muito bem. És um miúdo mesmo muito cuidadoso. Ei, hey, como é que aquela bolota foi ali parar? <risos> 